Hello and welcome to the One Source Corporation Tax Suite client video for January 2015. My name is David Blackmore and I am one of the senior tax content developers working on One Source Corporation Tax. This video is intended to provide an overview of some of the content developments made to One Source Corporation Tax during the 2014 calendar year. So therefore covering both the summer version 7 and autumn version 7.1 releases. Here is a list of the items that I will be covering today. They include change in accounting standard, Analysis of fixed asset disposals, tracking pre-trading expenditure and debits, tracking and reporting of claims and elections, tracking part disposals in short life asset pools, disaggregation of non-trading debits for double tax relief, research and development in tangible assets, and then finally one or two other legislative and functional changes of note. This video has been split into sections corresponding to the contents listed so that you can navigate directly to any sections of particular interest should you wish to. Change in accounting standard. Most companies will be adopting a new accounting standard by 2016 most commonly adopting either FRS 102 or full IFRS, as this is mandatory for accounting periods beginning after 1 January 2015. This will require a restatement of assets and liabilities at balance sheet date prior to the adoption of the new standard. If adjustments arise on these restatements, these will need to be considered for tax purposes to determine if they are either taxable or allowable, and if they are taxable, whether spreading can be applied. The change in basis adjustments sheet has been upgraded to support migration to a new standard. This can be developed from Home, Develop, Other, Change in Basis Adjustments from either the Profit and Loss Account D sheet or the Tax Calculation a sheet. On roll forward, the closing UK gap balances from the previous period will be rolled forward as usual. We have, however, added change in basis columns to the relevant tax analysis sheets to allow individual adjustments to be identified in the new period where they arise. These adjustments will then be aggregated on the newly enhanced change in basis adjustments sheet where they can be analysed for tax purposes as required. Any tax adjustments that need to be made will be accumulated and posted to the relevant tax analysis sheet. So for instance, any loan relationship tax adjustments required will be made on the loan relationships sheet itself. We implemented these changes early in 2014, well in advance of the mandatory date, to ensure that those companies early adopting were fully supported. I will now show an example of this in One Source Corporation Tax. In my example, the specific provision has been adjusted on the change in accounting standard. We can follow the crosslink from the change in basis total to the reconciliation section on the change in basis adjustments sheet where all the adjustments in the period are accumulated. So I select the total cell and select the cross reference to schedule D7. If I move down the page, as you can see, there is the change in basis adjustment which has been linked through together with a series of other adjustments from other sheets totaling £460,000. This total 
then needs to be analysed for tax purposes in one of the sections above. In this instance, the adjustment is under the heading General Trading Items and relates to, to specific provisions as shown. In this example, however, I have ignored any deferral or spreading that could be applied. The adjustment is taxable and so will increase the taxable profit for the relevant period. So again, if I share, if I go to the total taxable figure for general trading items, you will see there is a cross-reference link to the A or um, adjustment to trade profit section. If I select that and put the schedule sheet into final mode, as you can see, there is the adjustment on the change in basis schedule, which feeds through to the total trading profit for the period. Analysis of fixed asset disposals. This sheet has been added as a result of specific requests from clients. It allows you to analyse individual fixed asset disposals between capital allowance or fixed asset type for tax purposes and post the details back to the main fixed asset disposal sheet. We have made the sheet simple to use. You simply set the selector for each individual disposal, disposal to the relevant capital allowance type. We also hope that the sheet will save you time. The totals for each capital allowance type are auto calculated and linked back to the fixed asset disposal sheet. This sheet also allows the completion of fixed asset disposals to be automated. The individual asset disposals can be imported via tax pack directly from source into the analysis schedule. From there, they can be taxed analyzed and then posted back to the main fixed asset disposals sheet. The new sheet is available for financial year 2014 files onwards, i.e. computations ending in financial year 2014. Previously, it was necessary for this analysis to be undertaken outside of one source corporation tax and only the cumulative details linked into the main fixed asset disposals sheet. The sheet is developed from the main fixed asset disposals sheet via the home develop fixed asset disposals analysis option. Again, I'll now show an example of this in one source corporation tax. In my example, most of the fixed asset disposals have already been entered and analyzed by allowance type. Just as a point of note, you will see that we have provided columns for the entry of a code or the date of disposal. These are not mandatory, they're purely optional, depending upon, and hopefully you will find them helpful. As you will see, in this particular case, I have a series of errors highlighting the fact that the totals of the analysed values at the bottom of the screen do not equal the totals of all the assets in each case. This is because the final net asset disposal that I've imaginatively called PM5 has not been allocated to an allowance type. So if I simply need to select the drop down and then select whatever the particular capital allowance or fixed asset type that the disposal applies to. In this case, I'll select the plant pool. As you can see, all of the assets are now analysed for tax purposes and therefore the errors are cleared.
these totals at the, in the bottom half of the sheet will be posted back to the main fixed asset disposals sheet. So if I select the plant pool totals for cost and select the cross reference to C1, which is the fixed asset disposals sheet, as you can see, the totals have automatically been posted back to the schedule, fully, fully analyzed as required. The analyzed figures then link as normal through to the individual capital allowance sheets. So if I select, say, the disposal proceeds for the special rate assets pool and select the cross reference to schedule B2, as you can see, the fixed asset disposal proceeds has been automatically linked through and the capital allowance calculation completed. Tracking pre-trading expenditure and debits. This particular sheet has again been enhanced as a result of specific requests from clients. The enhanced sheet allows you to analyse current period pre-trading expenditure and to accumulate and carry forward unclaimed expenditure for relief in later periods. The sheet also now allows you to accumulate and carry forward unclaimed pre-trading debits for relief as trading debits in later periods. We have made the sheet simple to use you simply set a selector to determine whether relief is claimed in the current period or is carried forward. We have tried to make the sheet intuitive to use. Current period expenditure is linked from the income statement or profit and loss account in the standard way, then analysed within the sheet. To make the sheet comprehensive, we have now included the tracking of cumulative pre-trading debits. Debits will be analysed on the loan relationship sheet as usual, but then the total can be linked through using the cell provided. The enhanced sheet is available for financial year 2014 files onwards, i.e. computations ending in financial year 2014. Previously, the sheet was only used for analysing pre-trading expenditure and only in the period that relief was claimed. The sheet can be developed from either the tax liability A sheet or the loan relationship sheet via the home, develop, tax and pre-trading expenditure and debits option. Once again, I will show an example of this within One Source Corporation Tax. My example is an investment company, and I've linked through some expenditure included in the income statement to the reconciliation section at the bottom of the sheet. If I now move up to the analysis section at the top, as you can see, I have analysed the expenditure included in the income statement and there is a small amount, amount that is non-allowable. We have provided a section to analyse the current period deduction and pre-trading expenditure carry forward. The selector has been set so that relief is not claimed in the current period. As this is an investment company file, this is the only available option. The current period expenses have been accumulated with the unclaimed expenses brought forward from earlier periods. Where expenses have been carried forward unclaimed for over seven years, those expenses that are no longer claimable should be deducted using the cell provided. The cumulative total will be automatically carried forward to the next period on roll forward, as you would expect. The pre-trading debit section is used in the same way as the pre-trading expenditure carried forward section. 
The difference being that the debits continue to be entered on the loan relationship sheet as usual. Once the pre-trading debits are analysed in the usual way, the total is entered in the pre-trading debits carried forward CTA 2009 section 332 cell as indicated. And this is then automatically linked back to the pre-trading expenditure and debits sheet. I will now open the following period file to show the claiming of the relief. I have rolled forward into a trading company computation and there is no current pre-trading expenditure to analyse. As you can see, relief is now being claimed in the current period and is made up entirely of the bought forward expenses from earlier periods. If I put the A sheet into final mode, you can see that the expenditure is being claimed within the trading result. Likewise, the pre-trading debits are shown as being fully utilised in the period. So if I follow the cross-reference through to the loan relationship sheet, again put it into final mode, you can see that the pre-trading debits are now being utilised as taxable trading debits in the current period. Tracking and reporting of claims and elections. These sheets have been enhanced as a result of a number of specific requests from a client. The enhanced sheets allow you to monitor claims and elections recommended and made as part of your normal compliance process. We have tried to simplify the sheets by adding the event-based sheet to cater for claims that don't fall naturally into the normal two or four year time limits and by reorganizing the individual claims and elections within the relevant sheets to make them more consistent. We have provided for more comprehensive reviews and audit trail by auto-completing certain key fields when amended, plus you can now add comments to aid a future reviewing. We have tried to make the sheets intuitive and user-friendly, as the addition of legislative references will allow for easier searching for specific claims and elections. The claims are split into sections within each sheet relating to a broad tax category or other logical grouping. Some sections will always display, such as group relief or losses and deficits. But the rest of the sections are sensitive to the underlying data in the computation and will only display where relevant data is included in the computation capital allowances, for instance. If you want to review the claims within a section, even though there is no related data in the underlying computation, a flag has been provided for each section to allow for the claims to be displayed regardless. The enhanced sheets are available for financial year 2014 onwards, i.e computations ending in financial year 2014. Previously, the sheets were called the time limit sheets. And whilst they behaved in fundamentally the same way, they didn't have the full functionality as described above. The sheets are developed from the tax liability or A sheet via home, develop, administration, claims and elections. I'll now demonstrate the functionality using an example. There are three claims and elections sheets. Those with two year time limits, as shown. Those with four year time limits. 
and those with other or event-based time limits. If we look at the two-year time limits sheet, in my underlying computation, I have both capital allowances and intangible data. So the claims included under those sections are displayed for review. This will be the same on each of the relevant claims and elections sheet. However, I have no patent box data in my underlying computation, and so the claims under this section are not displayed automatically. If you wish to review them, however, simply select the flag in the column Expand to show all sections, and as you can see, the full claims and elections are then shown. Within my computation, I have included some short life assets. This also includes some current period purchases for which I need to make a Capital Allowances Act 2001 Section 83 election. So if I move up to the specific claim, how you then choose to use the sheets will obviously depend on your own firm's individual processes and procedures. So for instance, I could simply show that the claim has been made by amending the flag. However, to show a full audit trail, I am also going to amend the claim and election recommended flag. As you can see, this auto completes the reviewer and date of review fields. For completeness and a full future audit trail, I will also add a comment for any future reviewer. You then follow the relevant process or procedure for each individual claim and election, which is relevant in your particular case. After reviewing each of the individual claims and elections, you can then indicate that the review of the two year claims and elections is complete. So if I move down to the bottom of the schedule, you will see there is a specific section there review of two-year claims and elections complete. If I select that to show yes, once again, you can see that the system auto-completes the reviewer and date of review fields. You can then follow the same process for each of the four-year claims and elections and event-based and other claims and elections sheets to complete the process in entirety. And just as one final note, you will see that there is a facility to add any other individual claims and elections which are missing. And as you can see, you can insert as many of these rows as you wish. Tracking part disposals in short life asset pools. This sheet was added as a result of specific requests from clients. It allows you to track the number of units making up an individual short life asset pool across multiple periods to ensure that part disposal calculations can be correctly calculated. We have made the system flexible. The new sheet is optional, so it doesn't have to be used if not required. The sheet automates part disposal calculations. It automatically calculates the tax written down values required for both the balancing allowance or charge calculations, as well as the continuing writing down allowance calculations where relevant. The sheet will also help to save time and risk. The units remaining and associated costs are carried forward to the following period. The sheet is available for financial year 2013 files onwards, i.e computations ending in financial year 2013. Previously, the tracking of the individual assets within a short life asset pool needed to be done manually outside of one source corporation tax. The sheet is developed from the short life asset pool sheet itself via home, develop, 
SLA pool dash units pooled. Just by way of a reminder, as this does occasionally crop up on our support hotline, an individual short life asset pool consists of a pool of fungible assets acquired within a single accounting period, i.e. we do not add assets to a pool once that pool has been created for a period. Moving on now to an example within one source corporation tax. My example contains a number of short life asset pools, some of which have been analysed and some not. My imaginatively named SLA pool 2 in the example was acquired in an earlier period and rolled forward and has been analysed using the new sheet. So if I select the cross reference to schedule B6, it is the new schedule. Hopefully, as you can see, it should be self-explanatory. You simply enter the disposal date and the units disposed of, and the system will automatically calculate the relevant costs associated with the disposal. If we follow the link back to the main short life asset pool sheet, you can see that the relevant details have been linked through from the supporting sheet and this allows the writing down allowance, as shown here, to continue to be calculated, as well as the relevant balancing adjustment via the section at the bottom. If we now review the relevant trade adjustment calculation, you can hopefully see that both the balancing adjustment for the short life asset pool and the writing down allowance have been brought through as per normal. Disaggregation of non-trading debits for double tax relief. The loan relationships and intangible fixed assets sheets have been enhanced following requests from clients. We now automatically disaggregate non-trading loan relationship and intangible debits when credits have foreign tax are deducted. We've made the process simple. You continue to enter the data in exactly the same way as before. No additional action or data entry is required. This is because we have automated the disaggregation within the double tax relief calculations to allocate the disaggregated debits in the most tax efficient manner. We've also made this consistent as the calculations link in with the existing DTR calculations or O2 sheet, which will show you how the disaggregated debits have been utilised and allow you to adjust the allocation if you wish. The enhanced sheets are available for financial year 2014 files onwards, i.e. computations ending in financial year 2014. I will briefly show you the functionality using the loan relationships sheet. The intangible fixed assets sheet will behave in exactly the same way. My example is a straightforward, if somewhat contrived, investment company. As you can see, it has some non-trading loan relationship income, some management expenses and related capital allowances, and also has a double tax relief claim in relation to loan relationship credits. If we now review the loan relationship sheet, which is A5 in my file, also change back to data entry mode, you can see that I have debits in respect of interest paid. The credits, however, are split partly between UK income and partly in respect of foreign income. You will see that a section headed Disaggregation under TOPA 2010, Section 54, is visible in review mode. This shows both the non-trading debits available to allocate against other income for DTR purposes and non-trading credits potentially eligible for DTR. The foreign income is analysed on a separate sheet. so. 
we will review that. I'll move back up to the relevant cell and select the cross-reference link to Schedule A6. As you can see, this shows foreign tax has been suffered of 900,000 on the loan relationship credit. You will also see that some reliefs have been set against this foreign income as the total reliefs available exceed the total of UK income. In this case, however, the reliefs offset do not restrict the double tax relief available. If I follow the cross-reference through to the DTR calculations or O2 sheet, you can follow how the calculations are carried out and where the adjustment of allocation of reliefs is added. So there is the amount of foreign tax deducted. There is the UK tax calculated on the net income giving the DTR available. And here is the cell where you would adjust the allocation of reliefs where this is possible. Research and development in tangible assets. Once again, the intangible fixed asset sheets have been enhanced following requests from clients. The changes allow you to continue to track and disallow the amortisation relating to the asset in future periods, as well as transferring the value of the expenditure in the period to the R&D tax relief sheet to allow the relevant enhanced tax relief to be claimed. We've made the process simple. You can enter the intangible fixed asset data in exactly the same way as any other intangible asset. You simply show that the asset is excluded from the intangibles tax regime and eligible for R&D tax relief. We have made this intuitive to save time in future periods. No tax value will be carried when the file is rolled forward, but you can continue to track the net book value movement and any amortisation. We've also made this consistent. Once the intangible asset has been shown as excluded from the intangibles tax regime and available for relief as R&D, the R&D tax relief sheet is completed in exactly the same way as before. The enhanced sheets are available for financial year 2014 file on files onwards, i.e. computations ending in financial year 2014. I'll now briefly demonstrate how the intangible fixed asset sheets are completed and linked to the R&D tax relief sheet. I have a number of intangible fixed assets acquired in the period that I want to claim R&D enhanced tax relief on. As you can see, I've split these into two tranches, intangible R&D 1 and R&D 3. You enter the intangible fixed assets in the same way as you do any other intangible asset, which is either by entering the details directly onto the intangible fixed asset summary sheet that we're currently on, or alternatively by analysing an individual row on this schedule and completing the intangible accounts values and intangible tax values sheets. I have analysed intangible R&D 1 onto the intangible accounts values and intangible tax values sheets. So if I select the cross reference here to schedule C6, this is made up of two separate assets, as you can see. And on the intangible accounts values sheets, I've entered details of the additions and the amortisation. To get the correct tax treatment, I move to the intangible tax values sheet and simply select the correct type of write down for the asset. So I'll select the cross reference here to schedule C7. This takes us to the intangible tax values sheet. As you can see, the main details have been duplicated from the accounts values sheet and I simply need to select the relevant type of write down which in this case is R&D expense. I can now return to the intangible fixed asset summary sheet 
which will give me a summary of the assets for IFA purposes. I'll select this cross-reference here to take me back. As you can see, all the values have now been linked through directly from the backing schedules. So I have the expense arising in the period. It shows that the expense is disallowed under the IFA provisions. It's also linked through the net book value carried forward for accounts purposes and shows that there is no tax written down value to carry forward. It's also linked through the amortization per the accounts. And finally, and most importantly, that the full expenditure is excluded from IFA tax treatment and will instead be claimed as R&D expenditure. By contrast, I've entered the details for R&D3 directly onto the intangible fixed asset summary sheet. I've manually entered the expense arising in the period. The default position is that expenses will be disallowed unless it is explicitly stated in this cell here that it is to be allowed under the IFA tax provisions. I've also then manually entered the net book value carried forward, the amortization per the accounts and the excluded R&D expenditure. You will see that the end result is the same in both cases. If the R&D tax relief sheet needs to be developed, an error will advise you of this. I have already developed the sheet into this file, however, and if I move down to the overall total of R&D expenditure excluded by election, I can cross-reference to it. In this file, it is Schedule D8. As you can see, the figure of excluded expenditure has been linked through from the intangible fixed asset summary sheet. I then simply complete the R&D enhanced relief claim as per usual, and the tax relief will be given in the trade adjustment schedule. Other legislative and functional changes. This section is intended to highlight a few of the other changes that you may possibly be interested in, and we hope you will find useful. Firstly, non-daily apportionment override in long periods. The trade adjustment sheets have been enhanced following requests from clients. You can now override the default time apportionment basis of the split of the trade results in any period in excess of 12 months in length. The relevant override cell is placed towards the bottom of the trade adjustment sheet. We have deliberately kept this simple and straightforward. You simply enter the amended trade result for the first 12 month period and the system will then calculate the value to be used for the second or stub period and will use those amended values in any subsequent calculations for the trade result. This enhancement is available for financial year 2014 trading or multi-trade files onwards, i.e. trade or multi-trade computations ending in the financial year 2014. Moving on to film tax relief, following the changes to the way that film tax relief is calculated in Finance Act 2014, the information for the return or P sheet and the capital and other expenditure or P4 sheet have been amended to allow continued support for claiming the relief. You now enter the amounts of expenditure that would be eligible at each of the relevant rates. Again, we have deliberately kept this simple. We would, however, be keen to know if these reliefs are more widely taken advantage of than we are currently aware. Certainly, from the feedback we receive on the hotline, these tend not to be widely used. Moving on to another more specialised area, there have been a couple of significant changes for oil ring fence companies. Brownfield allowances. The field allowances sheet has been enhanced 
following the changes brought in from December 2012. This allows you to claim field allowances for additionally developed or brown fields as they are known. You enter details of the field allowance in the same way as you do other field allowance claims. The only difference is being the type of field selected via the relevant selector and also the additional data that is required to support the claim. Two types of field have been added to the type of field selector. They are brown in brackets no PRT and brown PRT. This allows for the different rates available for each. In both cases you would then need to provide the additional reserves in metric tons, the cost per ton and the fraction of the reserves within the UK marine area referred to in the legislation as UKR. Otherwise the sheet is completed in exactly the same way as it is for any other field allowance claim with the system auto calculating the total allowance available and the activated allowance. The enhanced sheet is available for ring fence companies for financial year 2013 files onwards i.e. computations ending in financial year 2013. Ring fence expenditure supplement. The other change for oil ring fence companies relates to the ring fence expenditure supplement sheet which has been enhanced following the changes brought in from December 2013. This allows you to claim the additional four years of supplement on expenditure, losses or supplement itself relating to onshore oil and gas activities. To allow the additional periods to be claimed, simply set the onshore oil and gas activity flag at the bottom of the ring fence expenditure supplement sheet to yes. You then simply complete the details as before and select whether or not to claim in the current period. The enhanced sheet is available for oil ring fence computations for financial year 2013 files and onwards, i.e. computations ending in financial year 2013. Bank levy. And finally, one more specialised point. The bank levy sheets have been enhanced following the changes made in Finance Act 2014. This allows you to enter high quality liquid assets which restrict the chargeable equity and liabilities subject to the bank levy. The software automatically allocates these across long term and short term equity and liabilities as required. The revised rates have, of course, also been added. I hope that you have found this video useful and informative. You will see contact details on the screen. So if you have any enhancement requests or suggestions, please contact the OneSource Corporation Tax Product Manager, Beverly Robinson. Her email address is on the screen. If you would like any further detail relating to either the points raised or indeed any other queries relating to the use of OneSource Corporation Tax, please contact the OneSource UK Customer Care and Support Team, the email address and telephone number of which are also on the screen. Finally, if you would like to find out more about the OneSource Corporation Tax suite of products, or indeed any other of the Thomson Reuters suite of products, or have any other questions in relation to sales or licensing, please contact the OneSource UK Sales Support Team again their email and telephone number details are on the screen. Thank you for your time.